Welcome back to Nightly Nonsense, where we attempt to make some sense out of the nonsense all around us. I just have to say, I feel like I have arrived. There's arriving and then in there's my arrived. life. Wow. I have made it to Nightly Nonsense. To Nightly Nonsense. Do you know why? Where is like where is the person supposed to be playing the trumpet, you know, and like the band, right? For the band, and where Strike is your Ed McMahon? Band. Am I supposed to be your Ed McMahon? This might be. We might be making some oh, changes to nightly nonsense. Man, where we make sense out of the nonsense. Listen, oh, I've got God. some. Uh, I got some questions for you. Are you ready? Uh, yes. All right. So we were uh, we were just having a deep. Theological discussion in this room on multiple issues. Some I'm going to spare the people of, but uh, I want I want to get your take on uh, something that has been happening more and more around us, and we really need to try to make some sense out of this. And in all seriousness, uh, you know, we just endured another school shooting, mm -hmm. uh, right where three little kids, three adults mm -hmm. were. Uh, were were shot and killed. In previous, especially one in Texas, right? There was a lot of a lot of, of nonsense out there about the police and whether they should have came in sooner or later, and all of these things. We're constantly evaluating post something about what should have been done in the moment, right? And and one of the things that that struck well, Monday morning quarterback exactly. We're commentating on other stuff, right? Right. So, but one of the things that struck me was the principal of this school, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that this woman was one of the, the women, one of the people who was killed. But it, but, but it says in some of the reporting that she actually went forward. Mm -hmm. So when everybody else is leaving the building, everybody else is trying to get out, everybody else is escaping, she went forward. Mm -hmm. This is one of my, my favorite topics. I talk about it frequently with uh, crash site Christianity. The fact that whenever there's a crash in our world, there are people who are fleeing there, but, but every once in a while there's a few people who are moving towards towards the problem. They're, they're moving towards helping to fix something or, or solve something or protect something. So my first question to you, when, as we try to make some sense out of all this, is what, what really propels a person into going forward in that kind of a situation rather than escaping and protecting their own life like everybody else? One is a sense of purpose. Oh, that's fantastic, right? Goes along with making some sense out of it. So yes. what about purpose? What do you mean by that? Um, well, I'm thinking about the situation you're talking about. And, uh -huh. and she definitely, uh, and I read what you read, or were talking about, is she did go to it. Um, <clears throat> she, okay, so purpose, let's add, there's a sense of of that she loved these kids mm -hmm. yeah. that she she would do that but she knew what her role was Ooh. it was not just um it was not just a an occupation mm -hmm. it was a vocation for her that said i'm i'm here for these kids right and and her and she knew her role was to protect the kids i love that. Uh, what you're saying, because part of making sense out of nonsense around us is knowing our role. Yeah. Right? What is our role in that moment? Right? I, I don't know what's going through this woman's head. Don't know whether or not she knew, felt like she was going to lose her life in this whole thing. Didn't, don't know what she thought in those last moments. But, but, but she was propelled forward yes. when everybody else is reacting backwards. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, th th that's an amazing thing. We're going to look now and, and she'll be forever a hero, right? Until until people start digging yeah. up oh, dirt yeah, on her yeah, yeah. type right, of right, stuff. Right, but, right. but at the moment, she's she's a hero for, for going forward, right? But when we, when we look at this, an unarmed woman moving towards this type of a situation, there are a lot of people who would look at this and say, well, she, she moved forward, but she couldn't have helped the situation. She, there's nothing she was going to do to help. So we, as, as we look at all the things that we want to react to in our world today, 
and we look at it, at how we're prepared for those situations. How do we in those moments ascertain whether or not we are not qualified, but whether we're prepared to actually help in those moments? Huh. Well, I think we've got to give them. Uh, we have to give the, the, the we're in a we're in a culture that we we have these things can happen we yeah. didn't worry about it 20 years ago 30 years ago nope. as a kid I, I didn't worry about my mom didn't worry about if i was out in the front yard playing yeah. someone taking me you know she figured they'd probably bring me back anyway but um as soon as i started <laughs> yammering all the time but anyway it was a chatterbox then and chatterbox now um <clears throat> it, it's a different world in, in our own uh in our own area someone a violent murder was released yeah yeah and and it's freaking people out in yeah. in an adjacent county of ours because yeah. like this person has been released how do we know they're not going to kill again because it was a random killing right and so you have to be thinking what am i going to do yeah what exactly. is my plan mm -hmm. uh and we've never had to do that before yeah we've never had to do that before well, and again, <coughs> this whole idea of we're constantly <coughs> looking for leadership. Right. Right. And again, we, it, there's so many different ways to lead, right? We, we don't always lead by yeah. leading in a head. Well, right. I'm not right. always leading the parade. Sometimes I'm in the middle of the parade. Sometimes right. I'm behind the parade, right? But but these situations just get me thinking, like, again, we're, we're very quick to throw out, man, she's a hero because she did this. And I, I, I agree. Like, she, she probably saved lives by by getting in the way like that but there was nothing she was prepared mm -hmm. to do in that situation right in order to right. really really truly protect all of these other people and i think that one of the hard things is all of these different things that we see in our world today going on right i, I think of the you know the train derailment in ohio and think about how they they you know they cleared out all of the people in the area because they were afraid of an explosion and all the toxic stuff and all these things and then you got people from the outside wanting to come in yeah and it, looking at they're going why yeah. what why if everybody is getting away from a situation yeah. yeah why exactly do you feel the need to go to the situation yeah. when when the uh, the two big snowstorms up in buffalo mm -hmm. um you know, the here's what I was taught. My dad was a volunteer fireman. Mm -hmm. We were, it was drilled into us. Mm -hmm. We would go if we heard the fire trucks go by. Yeah, we would go out to the end of the dry or the 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 sidewalk. We were not allowed to go beyond the sidewalk, but we we, we got to watch. It. Every kid wants to see the fire truck. Yeah, by, you know. Yeah, but oh, Katie, bar the door. If we would have followed. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Dad's like, let them do their job. Get out of the way. Exactly. <clears throat> and so, you know, it, it's such a fine line we run into in the church. What is helping and what is not? Amen. Um, not everything that we, that uh, some people say, well, I need, you know, I, you probably had this. Oh, I, I need some help with paying my, my rent or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, no, you need some help with budgeting. Yep. You need some help with budgeting. Uh, you don't have a money problem. You have a a a mindset problem with mm -hmm. with money. Do we do people get into situations? I'm sure you have. I have. Things happen. But when there is a consistent problem, mm -hmm. then what we need to do, and and that is where like um, the idea of I was going to talk about this on my chasing when I still might now. Um, but maybe I'll talk about it here. Maybe it's supposed to be talked about this idea of redemptive. Yeah. yeah. Redemptive compassion, redemptive justice. Shouldn't everything we do as the church be redemptive? Mm -hmm. And redemptive meaning that we help people out of their situation. Yep. I mean, the whole idea of, rede of redemption is that God pulled us out of our sin problem. Yeah. Well, sometimes our sin problem is a money problem sure. or a budgeting problem. People say, hey, you've heard it. Oh, I can't afford to tithe, Pastor. I say, you know what? I can't afford not to. <coughs> Um, uh, you know, I, I have, I can't not tithe because God do more ninety percent than do more than ninety percent than I can with a hundred. I've yep. seen it over and over and over again. Yep. And well, I can't afford to. No, you, it, it, because tithing is not about um, money; it's about stewardship. Exactly. It's about I can afford the things I want, mm -hmm. and sometimes I can't afford the things I want, but I go get them. That's <laughs> so true. <laughs> so I, I think it's uh, where are we at. 
Um, when you think about, you know, the old joy thing, Jesus, others, you, but yet that's not accurate. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said, was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He says, love God yep. and love others as you love yourself. Yep. So the only way I'm going to see you as a person of value is if I see myself as a person of value. And then we can go to the golden rule, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Would I want you mm -hmm. to do what you could to help me? Sure. I, I, there's a lot of things I don't know that i got to have people help me with. And there's things that other people ask me to help them with. Yep. You know, when we start, so then we go to, now I'm going to get preaching. <laughs> but you invited me. So so we, we go to uh, Paul, one of Paul's letters where he said, I think it's a, a, it's Ephesians, isn't it? Philippians, one of them, where he says, uh, each of you shouldn't look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Mm -hmm. Now, I, now I, some say, Pastor, you quoted that wrong. No, but I translated it correctly. Yep. Because the word only, if you read the way it reads in most translations, each of you should look not only to your own needs, but to the needs of others. Right. Only is not in the Greek. Nope. It's not in the Greek. So we have several people down here. So I said, well, I got to look out for my needs, but I also look out for yours. Well, here's the thing. If I look out for your needs, mm -hmm. you look out for Summer. Summer looks out for Bob. Bob looks out for Mel. And we could go down the yeah, road. Keep Pretty soon it's going to come back that someone's going to be looking out for my needs. Exactly. That we're, we're working in this together. So um, we are a very selfish, mm -hmm. self-centered, egocentric culture. It has been drilled into us. Yep. We see it in our churches that we, we you know, we back 30 years ago when I started ministry, it was the seeker sensitive. Yep. And what we've created is a, is a bunch of consumers. But I, I don't want to blame it on that because there was consumers in the church before that. Yeah. My piano bench, that's my pew, that's my Sunday school my class. My stained glass window. My stained glass window. And so <clears throat> um, what we've done is, is we, in the church, we've created a consumer mindset. And now we're saying, wait a minute, we need some contributors. We don't have them. And I'm not talking financial contributors. I'm talking... People just say, hey, I can do that, Pastor. I can do that. People you know? go forward when everybody right. else is going back. And, and so we're too, I think part of it is we're too busy thinking of ourselves because the only way that principal did it was she said, I, I am not the most important person here. Yep. I, need to, I need to do something. And I might, get, but I might get killed doing it. Yeah. Crazy if you think <clears throat> about what she may or may not have been thinking about in right. that moment. Right. right. Yeah. Just yeah. Do it going forward. Someone's going to say that was nonsense. Yep. And someone else could say, well, there's a bunch of parents that are saying, well, thank God she did that. Yeah. You know. Oh, absolutely. She, she probably saved and protected other kids. Yes. Um, there's no doubt about that. Right. So I think, again, this, this whole thing is hard. It's hard to make sense out of what we look at as, as just a nonsensical moment. Right. right. A tragic nonsensical right. moment. So, listen, we're going to leave it right there. It was good to have... Pastor Mark on nightly nonsense, making some sense out of the nonsense all around. Which us. really is scary that I made sense out of the nonsense. You did. You did a pretty oh good job, gosh. too. We'll see you next time.